Hello, people of the internet. My name is Nick from OC Magic, and today I'm going to show you Domain Monarchs for March 2016. Uh, this is not like the solid build that I'm going to play, but it's the one that I'm having the most success with right now. I've been playing it for a while on Dev Pro. I'm X1 on Dev Pro. My rating's at almost 1100, starting from like 850, so this deck's amazing. Uh, once uh, we're getting Infinite Gold, OTS, and Shining Victories. So, as they release, the deck's going to get better and better, and after every release, and after my testing, I'm gonna, I will uh, show you guys the new list, what works, what doesn't, and once we get to regionals, I'm gonna have a dick load of deck profiles for you guys, because my buddies are gonna spend the night, they're gonna drive me crazy, and uh, that's about it, you'll get your deck profiles. Because I was supposed to get a Yang Zing list, an OEM list, and... Our ritual beast list, but we never got to them, so for now, this is Domain Monarchs version 1.0. Triple Erebus, because it's the best monarch in the deck. No if fans or butts. It, uh, you can send two different monarch spell traps from deck to grave and shuffle a card in hand, deck or grave, back to deck, doesn't target on resolution, yada yada yada. Also, if he's in the graveyard, you can you can uh, send a monarch spell or trap from your hand to grave and get back a monarch. Is it twenty four hundred or more? Oh, damn, that can get back dark some more. That's fucking broken. Triple Aether, second best monarch. She can summon one from deck and she beats someone on your opponent's turn. Really cool Storm 4 plays with this because you can just nuke your opponent's board. Get in for about 6,000 damage. Depending on if they have a monster and a few of domain. This should be a Mega Thessalos. It's in the mail. I am getting it. If this video doesn't go up for some reason, I will show you the Mega Thessalos in like a picture or something on my Facebook page. So... But yeah, this should be a Mega Thessalos. It's really good. Uh, the only reason that card's $15 is because of the fucking hand rip build that exists. Which you can actually loop two cards out of your opponent's hand turn one. But you need to open this, this, Edia, one for one. Because then you can get back the cards that you use and you can do two tribute summons. So you need one for one and both of these or the ability to get to both of these. Like, if you open return, you can return for this with this, and you can... Because you don't need both on board, you just need to be able to summon them. So that you can go, like, alright, Erebus, shuffle a card. That's the let me look at your hand, let me get rid of a card. They're on they're on four cards, and you're on, like, seven. So it's nice. Uh, one Karaz, fucking broken. You usually, like, summon it off of Ether, and then you pop both and draw two. And then your graveyard is full for Erebus. And then the last Monarch cards are Majesty's Fiend. Again, this is build 1.0. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of testing to see what works. My plan is to play as many as few monsters as possible, but play the best monsters. So like this lineup of ten monarchs right now is probably not going to change because these are just the best ten monarchs in my opinion. Caius sucks. Okay, that card's just bad. <laughs> he targets for God's sakes, and he doesn't do anything except for when you summon him, you just go banish to. Like at the very least with Thestalos. When you summon him, you can recycle him. I guess you could do the same with Caius, but Caius requires too many resources, and to me, he's just a bad card. I've never liked him. Anyway, back to this. Uh, there is Vanity's Fiend reprint, by the way. So I might like do like main deck two Majesties, one Vanities, and then side a Vanity's Fiend. If it was 24 1000, then oh my god, that would be amazing, because then you could search it with return, but. This is searchable around turn, so you can just, like, alright, tribute summon an Aether, special cross, and get this, and then you just generate so much advantage, because next turn you can lock them out of playing Yu-Gi-Oh. That's it for Monarchs, and then I'm playing 3 Edia and 3 Eidos. Alright, here's here's my thing with these cards. If you get one, like, if you get one Eidos or one Edia, you're set for the whole game. Because this can keep summoning this, which can keep summoning this, which can keep summoning this. So honestly, you could play one Edia and three Eidos, and the deck would still function. It's just, if you open this turn one and you summon it and it gets Valored, you don't have any extra copies. So, what I'm thinking is what I'm going to do is, odds are, Eidos is going to stay at three. I might cut Edia down to two and just replace this with like a Solemn Morning, because Solemn Morning in this deck is fucking broken. Because you can just go set your board and then set warning and then when your opponent tries to counter your board you flip it and like odds are you're gonna win either you're gonna win or they're gonna have to put so many resources on the board that you can then storm forth and win so 
I might cut this down to two. I'm not sure yet. I haven't done enough testing to see how that would work. So that's it for monsters at 16. Again, I'm with this deck. I'm trying to be a turbo deck. I'm just trying to get through my cards as fast as I can to get to uh to get to my combo pieces. So three upstart goblin. Now I do want to talk about cards that you can play in this deck. You can play chicken game. You can play reasoning. You can play the lockdown version. You can play hand rip. I'm going to go through each one of those decks right now because they all use Upstart Goblin. So let's start with Chicken Game. I've played that deck. That deck is awful. You only play seven Monarchs in the deck. And like you side deck your Majesty's Fiends because apparently you don't want to play them game one to increase your Monarch count. Because if you increase the Monarch current but increase the number of draw cards, you're going to clog with Monarchs. But there is, that, there is that instance where you can just get perfect draw with perfect Monarch. But when I was playing Chicken Game... I found that it was either drawing too many Monarchs and not enough draw spells, or I was playing too many draw spells and not enough Monarchs, because I would just never see them. Because there were only 7 in the deck. Sure, you had the same statistical advantage of playing 9, 40, 9 out of 40, and 7 out of 31, but you couldn't play 9 out of 31, because then you would just brick more often than you would succeed. So that's why I'm playing this version, which is kind of just Domain Lock, which, in my opinion, it's the best version right now. Because a lot of people are relying on the extra deck to deal with problem cards. You know, a lot of people are playing Utopia of the Lightning, which Utopia of the Lightning just beats you, but if you domain them, you don't have to deal with it. And so, with this card, what you can do is you can just play three Upstart and you don't have to play any other draw cards because this is the only one you need. You could play three Chicken Game and three Terraforming, but those are just going to brick your hands more often than they aren't. Because with this deck, you're just trying to be linear. You're just... I'm more of a linear duelist than a turbo duelist because I don't want to just draw my whole deck and hope to have a monarch. I want the ability to just consistently get to my combo pieces, and that's what I've done with this deck, and this is why I think that my build is correct. Three pantheism because, you know, you're going to go plus two. You might as well do it. Three tenacity because why would you not play three of a search card in your deck? It just increases the odds that you're going to see it and that you're going to get to the card you want. Because I'm playing Domain Lock, I have to play three copies of Domain. I absolutely think this card is terrible. I think it is trash. I think that if I really wanted to lock my opponent out of the extract, I have so many better ways of doing it than just playing this and hoping not to get Twin Twisted. Because there are actually monsters that say your opponent, like, I can play Dragoonity and lock my opponent out of an extra deck for three turns and just win the game from that because I could actually win the game. With this card, I have to play it and hope it resolves. And then I have to hope I don't get Twin Twisted. And then my opponent just castles my Erebus. And then I take a bunch of damage. And then I lose the fucking game. <sighs> but I was playing it at one in the like in the new adjusted list format at my regional <coughs> because like I said in that video there weren't as many pendulum players I didn't have to worry about it now pendulums are everywhere so I have to play three of this card it does get you out of master restrict which is a bonus which is why it's kind of at three but I still hate it three storm fourth this is the best card in the deck it creates so many loopy plays. I understand why people want it to go to one, but Konami's still trying to sell Monarchs, so this, is, this isn't going to one. They're either going to hit Pantheism or they're going to hit Domain. One March, because I want to protect the lock of Majesty's Fiend Domain, and return to play around Solemn Strike. I don't understand why it gets around Solemn Strike, but it doesn't get around Valor. It doesn't get around Phoenix Chain or Breakthrough Scope. Please someone explain that to me. Just in the comment section, comment section tell me. One Rota, one one for one, and one Foolish. These are the reasons that Edia can go to two in the deck, and your deck still succeeds, because you can honestly just not give a fuck about having to get to Edia, because these get to her, and like, sure, if you play her at three, you increase the percentage of drawing her by like 2%, but like, you can just get to these cards, or this card, because like, if you dump Eidos, ah, uh, fuck. Or, like, if you if you, you can send Edia with this, and then, like, normal Eidos, normal Karaz, or normal Majesty's Fiend, and then, like, when it dies, you have your Tribute Fodder in your graveyard. So that's why this is an extra copy of Edia, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking that in Monarch 2.0, after Infinite Gold and OTS get released, Edia is going to go to 2, because there's just so many ways of getting her that... I don't want a brick with three Edia in my hand, or like two Edia and a Rota, or like two Edia and a one for one, or like one Edia. You, you get the point. 
I don't want my deck to clog with Edia because I can just get to her by playing her at two. Hell, she might go to one. Like, just legit. That's it for spells. I think I'm playing 18 spells. Might be 22. There's a lot of spells I went through, but I'm playing three prime just because I want the ability to never deck because I can just flip this. I can just go, all right, I'm, I'm like eight cards in deck. All right, flip. And then I'm playing one escalation to tribute summon on my opponent's turn. And the also, reason, the also reason is I want to play Solid Morning is because it's a backup card. Because, like, if I can't play it, I might as well stop my opponent play so that it stalls them. But it stalls me so I can get to my combo pieces, which is why Solid might hit the main deck. So that's it for the main deck. 40 cards. Again, I'm sorry if this video is kind of long. It is a kind of an in-depth version of Monarchs. We're talking about stats here. We're talking about what cards you can play. Why you need to play cards at 3. Why you need to play cards at 1. <laughs> So that was it for the main deck. I'm moving on to the extra, uh, side deck here. Extra, no extra deck. You're playing Domain. I'll start with Artifact Lancia. I'm playing this card for Cosmo and Infernoid, but because of another card that I'm side decking, I don't really use it against Cosmo. It's kind of for Infernoid because you have an auto lose Infernoid matchup in this deck because they don't need their extra to play Yu Gi Oh! and they don't need to target you to play Yu Gi Oh! They just need the ability to have a graveyard, and this stops them. Now you could say, well, not Chaos Hunter or Iron Maul. You can't play Chaos Hunter because A, you're going to tribute it and then you don't get any value out of it, and B, Iron Wall stops you from playing Yu-Gi-Oh because you need to banish. This is the perfect card for Monarchs. I feel like every Monarch card, every Monarch player should side deck two of these because it solves all of the problems that other cards can't solve. So Lancia should be at two in my opinion. I'm side decking two Gamma Seals. The reason I'm signing Gamma Seal is because it's the weakest Kaiju as everyone said, but like... Great Magnus is a pain in your fucking deck. You don't really have a good out to him unless your opponent's just bad and they don't spin your Monarch to the deck. You can just go, Kaiju, motherfucker. And they can't do shit. Because it tributes Great Magnus as a cost. So Great Magnus is gone. They get a bunch of graveyard effects. But, like, if you have Majesty's Fiend on the board, because, like, against Quantum, you have to go first. So you want to go Majesty's Fiend domain pass. And then if they out it, you can go, surprise, motherfucker. And, like, you'll win the game. Or, like, if Master Fiend's already on board and they make Magnus and, like, they don't attack because they did Soul Charge or something, you just go, Gamma Seal, attack, and, like, you fucking win. Like, I'm side decking Balfader for Pepe and Cosmo. I'm signing a lot of Cosmo hate, which is why I only want to play six monsters, but I'm side decking eight right now. It's probably going to change. Like, I might go to playing, uh, fucking. Valors and Maxis in my main because that's what the format needs me to do. But I'm not sure. So anyway, yeah, that's it for Battle Fader. Uh, I am signing two Effect Valor because the card's really good. You know, you can hit Pendulum Sorcerer, you can hit Eddie on stuff in the mirror. Like, you saw this in against almost everything that isn't Infernoid or Cosmo. So, this card is amazing. Again, what might happen is I might have to go Valor Maxi in the main and put this back to, like, original Monarchs. Like when they first came out, because you were playing, again, you were playing this lineup of Monarchs, but like, instead of playing like Escalation and Foolish and whatnot, you were playing two Valor, two Maxi to increase your monster count to stop your opponent from playing Yu Gi Oh! It might get changed. I don't know. I don't want it to change. I'm hoping it doesn't, but we'll see. Uh, I'm side decking two Dark Hole for Cosmo and the Mirror Match, because honestly, like, against Cosmo, you just want these four cards. But, like, I'm more, I'm more signing in, like, these four cards because with Lancia, with Lancia, I only want it against Infernoid. Like, this is kind of for Infernoid, so some of these cards, a lot of these cards are going to go in and out. Again, this is why this is version 1.0. Once more stuff gets released, once I know what's going to happen, once I know when my regional is, because that's what's the really most important factor to me right now, when I'm going to, the, to play this deck at regional, I'll know, like, what cards I need to play, what cards I don't need to play. And plus, I'll get some input from my friends and you guys in my comment sections. So that'll be great to hear. Back on to topic of Monarchs. Uh, two Dark Hole, obviously. I'm signing MSTs because A, I don't have Twin Twister, and B, you side these in every match. Even if it's against a, a fucking terrible deck like Venoms, because they may have Master Restrict in their side deck. And, like, this gets Master Restrict. And, like, I was originally signing Landrobe, the Rock Vassal. But because of... Oh, also, Fog King. This outs Fog King so hard. 
Legit, right now. I'm not lying to you. Fog King is a pain in the dick. You need to side this in to get rid of Fog King. What might happen is I might replace the Trap Stuns with a Book of Moon and a Landro because they out Burning Abyss and they also out Fog King. But that's my rant on MST. I'm signing deck. I'm side decking two Trap Stun because against like set four, set five decks like Yosan Juice or Teller Knight, Burning Abyss, I can just go. All right, they, they, they'll make me go first. Set one pass. They set four pass. Like draw uh, standby phase. Trap Stun. Response? No? Okay, go off. Like, it shuts off everything, but... These might change to Royal Decrees, but I don't want them getting MST because this is chainable. It really is hard to figure out because there's so many options with so many cards that you could play to out everything that this could be anything. A lot of these cards could just be two of anything, so... And then the 15 side deck card is obviously Solemn Morning because it's fucking amazing. So, this might go into the main deck because of how good it is and how easy it is. Like... This make your brick hands a br your brick hands a little more brick, but it stops your opponent from going off and OTKing you because you had a brick hand. Like when they go piece someone like four, you can just go solemn, and then and they're fucking salty. But also with trap stun, solemn strike and whatnot. But anyway, I'm sorry this video is very long. I went off on a lot of tangents that I shouldn't have, but that's how I am. And plus, I wanted to talk about card choices and what you can play in this deck and what I and what I think is the correct cards you should play but anyway this is domain monarchs version 1.0 uh infinite gold comes out on friday and i'm hoping we get the ban list on thursday because today is wednesday this is my bonus video of the week for you guys i really am hoping that we get the ban list tomorrow because not only can i make a reaction video well quote unquote talking about the ban list but i can also see what cards in Monarchs got hit, what the what cards in the meta got hit so that I can change the build to optimize it to top my regional because I need my invite. But anyway, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on the deck. Uh, what do you think I should play? What should get taken out? What ratios I should choose and whatnot? Leave all thoughts in the comment section down below. My name is Nick from Rosity Magic. Thank you guys for listening to my bullshit, and I will see you guys next time, either tomorrow with a ban list or on Saturday with your regularly scheduled video.